Hello there. Welcome to video 137 from Sumit Academy. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel. Do subscribe now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And do remember to like and share this video too. And if you want to drop in a line, I shall always be available at sumitacademy20 at gmail.com. To make your task a little easier, here is a complete list of all the 137 videos on my YouTube channel. The list is divided into the playlists under which they are available. Do have a look. If you feel that your command over the English language is not good or you want to prepare for your forthcoming exams, then this video is for you. Here we shall learn about using idioms to polish up our language. But a word before that, I do hope that you have seen my earlier two videos on idioms please do so. It will be useful for you. This is the third of four videos on idioms. These four videos will encourage you to learn 200 idioms in a simple, easy to understand language along with example sentences and of course a dash of humor now and then. So, what are idioms? An idiom is a phrase which always refers to something else rather than what each word signifies. Each idiom carries a figurative meaning which is quite different from the literal meaning. In English, there are an estimated 25,000 idiomatic expressions. Idioms are one of the hardest parts of learning a language. An idiom is a phrase which has a meaning, but the meaning is not clear from the words themselves. 
If you translate an idiom word for word, it sometimes makes no sense at all. They are like puzzles and even native speakers can get confused when someone uses a phrase that they have never heard of before. With that in mind, here are 50 common English idioms that you can use in a variety of situations. A first idiom is drop a bombshell. If someone drops a bombshell, they'll give you a sudden piece of bad or unexpected news. In other words, it means to make an unexpected, startling or disturbing announcement or revealing surprising information or news. Let us see a couple of example sentences. My brother dropped a bombshell by announcing his intention to migrate to Australia. Uh, let's see another sentence. You can't just drop a bombshell like that and leave. I need to know about your plans to get married so soon. Or have a look at this sentence. He dropped a bombshell with the news of his terminal cancer. A second idiom is an Englishman's home is his castle. This has another version which is a man's home is his castle. This simply means that a man's home is his refuge and he can do as he pleases in his own house. It also means that whatever happens at home must be controlled and solved in the same place. You don't have to involve others in your family matter as they are outsiders. In other words, the idiom is used for privacy and security. Let's use this idiom in a sentence. I strongly oppose any laws that dictate how I behave in the privacy of my own home. An Englishman's home is his castle. Another sentence would be, please don't tell me what I can or cannot do in my home. A man's home is his castle. A third idiom is the error of your ways. If someone sees the error of their ways, they realize or admit that they have made a mistake or behaved badly and start to understand how they can do better. Our example sentence would, would be, he is quite stubborn in his views. You just can't make him see the error of his ways. He publicly acknowledged the error of his ways and asked for forgiveness. We now move on to be a moot point. A moot point is a fact that doesn't matter because it's not relevant to the current situation anymore. So we can say that it is an issue regarded as potentially debatable, but no longer practically applicable. Let's try and use it in a sentence. How long he'll be able to do so is a moot point. Or it's a moot point whether the chicken or the egg came first a totally immaterial to the present circumstances. Our next idiom is more than glad or more than happy. Both mean the same thing except in the context used. For example, you can say that 
I am more than happy to drive you to the hospital. But you would never say, I would be more than glad to drive you to the hospital. You won't be glad, you will be happy. Let's try to use them in sentences. I am more than happy to offer you whatever assistance you want for your exam. Or, I am more than glad to contribute towards the good cause. So, look out for the circumstances and then use the word glad or happy. Another example would be, if you ever want to borrow the car, I shall be more than happy to lend it to you. A sixth idiom is against all odds. This means despite very low probability or in a most unlikely way. If you do or achieve something against all the odds, you do or achieve it although there were a lot of problems and you were not likely to succeed. Let's see what sentences we can make out of this idiom. Against all odds, he recovered from COVID despite his high diabetes. Another would be, she won the race against all odds. That is, nobody expected her to win. The seventh idiom on our list is to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. It means to deceive, to hide the truth from somebody. This idiom comes from the time when people wore wigs made of wool. If someone pulled the wig over their eyes, they would not be able to see. So if you say that someone is pulling the wool over your eyes, you mean that they are trying to deceive you in order to have an advantage over you. To use this idiom in a sentence, we have some people think they can get away with anything. They always try to pull the wool over others' eyes. Another, be prepared for your children to try to pull the wool over your eyes when they are teenagers. And of course, he was too clever to let them pull the wool over his eyes. That's how you should be. Next, we have clean as a whistle. If you describe something as clean as a whistle, you mean that it is completely clean. It also describes something thoroughly done, neat and tidy in appearance, entirely, totally or completely honest or legal. For example, this house needs to be as clean as a whistle before my mother-in-law gets here. Or, I don't have a criminal record. I am clean as a whistle. Or maybe, the handle of the pan just broke off clean as a whistle. A ninth idiom is a clean bill of health. This means that somebody is well or something is in a satisfactory and working condition. It is an assurance that an organization or process is operating properly according to specific standards. Let's have a look at a couple of example sentences. The doctor gave me a clean bill of health. Another one would be, six leather factories received a clean bill of health on pollution allegations. That means they were found to be non-polluting industries. 
We then move on to a clean slate. This refers to a record of your work or actions that does not show any mistakes or bad things that you may have done in the past. This also refers to an opportunity to start fresh despite past mistakes or problems. Another chance after wiping out old offenses or debts. This idiom often appears as wipe the slate clean. Let's see some example sentences. They kept a clean slate in the match. That is, no goals were scored against them. Joseph's boss assured him that the matter was finished and he could start with a clean slate. In other words, he was forgiven for his past mistakes. He wished he could wipe the slate clean, but it was too late to salvage the relationship. This means that though he hoped to be friends again, it was too late to start again. Next, we have clean up your act. This means to start behaving in a moral or responsible way or behave in a more acceptable manner. Let's use it in, a, some, in some sentences. After the accident, he cleaned up his act and gave up alcohol. After she got in yet another fight at school, the principal told her to clean up her act or else she would be expelled. Here it means that you must be better behaved and must control your temper. Since the media refused to clean up its act and stop media trials, the government implemented privacy laws. You are probably observing as to how many uses we can put the word clean to. Right? Let's see another one. This one is the idiom to come clean. This means to tell the truth about something, especially after lying or keeping it secret. As usual, some example sentences. I want you to come clean with me about your financial status before we get married. That means either the boy or the girl is asking the partner that please tell me how much money you have before I marry you. He finally came clean and confessed to the murder to the police. Another idiom to use the word clean is to have a clean hand. This means not to be responsible for any crime or dishonest activity. For example, wow, he threw the knife clean through the wall. That means the knife went right through the wall. Or, sorry, I clean forgot we had a meeting this morning. Or, all athletes will have to prove that they are clean before they'll be allowed to compete in the Olympics. That means, they should undergo a drug test. Keeping up, our next idiom is to make a clean breast of something. This means to admit fully to something that you have done wrong, to tell the whole truth. In olden times, people believed that the breast or chest was where a person's conscience was located, hence the idiom. The breast is still used 
metaphorically to represent the seat of emotions. Let's look at the example sentences. If you make a clean breast of your problems, creditors are much more likely to deal fairly with you. Another one, they decided to make a clean breast of their actions to the police when they saw a young boy being arrested for their crime. That means they confessed to the police. Next on our list is running around like a headless chicken. This means to carry on in a disorganized manner, a state of panic where there is a lot of running around which isn't effective. That is running around without direction or aimlessly or doing a lot of things at the same time without planning or purpose. For example, he ran around like a headless chicken after he missed his flight to the United States. Oops, that's terrible. It is important to get everything organized for the meeting so that we don't end up running around like headless chickens. That means prepare well for your meeting so that at the last minute you don't run around to complete the arrangements. Our 16th idiom is count chicken. This means make plans based on events that may or may not happen. To start making plans about something that is based on something in the future which may or may not happen or to make a plan about how the benefits of something will be utilized before it has even materialized. It is usually referred to monetary benefits being allocated for causes without actually earning or receiving the money. Let's see example sentence. It is not good to start counting your chickens when you do not even have the cash to start your venture. Now, as you may observe, this idiom is closely related to another idiom, to count your chickens before they hatch. Now, this we have already done in our earlier video on idioms. A 17th idiom is as different as chalk and cheese. This refers to two things which are completely different from each other, to have nothing in common with someone or something else, to lack similarity when compared with someone or something. And as usual, let's use this idiom in some sentences. Despite my children being identical twins, their characters are as different as chalk and cheese. Another sentence for you. What a politician says in public and how he acts in private are as different as chalk and cheese. Our 18th idiom has two versions square peg in a round hole or round peg in a square hole. Both mean the same, which is finding yourself in a situation that doesn't suit you, trying to do something that you don't know how to do, someone not capable of the job or task they are doing, or being out of your death or comfort zone in a situation. For example sentences, we have that lifestyle really doesn't suit Molly at all. She's like a square peg in a round hole. That means that that lifestyle 
is completely unsuited for Molly's temperament. Let's have another sentence. I went to the party for a little while, but since I did not know how anyone, I felt like a round peg in a square hole. Next we have to stand in a good stead. This means to be of advantage to someone. When something is said to stand someone in good stead, it implies the thing is being good for the person in any context. It is used in general to refer an experience or talent or ability or position, which would be useful or beneficial for a person, his life and his future. Now let's look at the example sentences. My years of experience in the spoken English field has stood me in good stead while making my YouTube videos. Or Niru's ability to accurately read someone's expression is standing her in good stead in her career as a psychiatrist. Our 20th idiom is to fan the flames. This means to make a bad situation even worse, to say or do something to make someone angrier than they already are, to stir up, create or inflame strong feelings of anger, hate or love. In other words, to cause or incite strong emotions. It is sometimes used in the positive sense too. As usual, some senten example sentences for you. The speaker's racist comments are really going to fan the flames of hatred among the crowd. Or it is irresponsible to fan the flames of separatism at a time when the country needs stability. And one in the positive sense. She was already infatuated with him, but his gentleness fanned the flames of love even more. Aha! Our next idiom is out of the frying pan into the fire. This means to go from a bad to worse situation. It is used to refer when a bad situation turns critical, moving from a very difficult position to one that is considered much worse. This phrase originated from the earliest century Greek poetry and is used to describe the process of trying to escape a smoke and getting scorched by the flames instead. As for example sentences, we have, I think I made a mistake moving from my old job to this one. It has been quite difficult, like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Another one. In a bid to gain independence from her parents, she got married early, not knowing that she was jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Our next idiom is, a burnt child dreads the fire. This means everyone avoids repeating a hurting experience in life. If once you have experienced any difficulty and loss in life, you always try to avoid that situation again. For example, a dog bit me when I was a child. A burnt child dreads the fire, so I hate dogs now. Another one. After his divorce, his mother wanted him to remarry, but he was wary as a burnt child dreads the fire. 
Our 23rd idiom is to burn the candle at both the ends. This means to exhaust one's energies or resources by leading a hectic life. To engage in an activity, usually work-related, from early morning until late at night. In other words, to work so hard that you don't rest and are soon exhausted. This idiom came into being in earlier times when candles were expensive and burning them cost money. If you were burning the candle at both ends, you were being wasteful. Let's look at the example sentences. Working and studying at the same time has led Dolly to burn the candle at both ends and always look exhausted. Since taking up the second job in the evening, I am always tired as I am burning the candle at both ends. The next idiom we encounter on our journey to master the English language is when hell freezes over. Now this is an impolite way of saying it will never happen, it will never come about, which will not occur at all. For example, don't hold your breath, she will forgive you when hell freezes over. Now that means she will never forgive you, however long you wait for her. I am going to give up smoking when hell freezes over. Uh-oh, this person is never going to stop smoking. At the halfway mark of our video, we have the idiom, the devil is in the detail. It means that when you do not concentrate on the details of something, you may run into unexpected problems. In other words, problems on large projects can often be attributed to small mistakes that were overlooked. The original phrase was, God is in the details. Now this meant that you needed to ensure that everything you did was done truthfully. The devil is in the details is a variation of the original phrase. Example sentences. You need to make sure that you read the contract very carefully. The devil is in the details. Or the Indian economy is performing strongly. But the devil is in the detail. In any negotiation, the devil is in the detail. That means read the thing properly. Our next idiom is idle hands are the devil's tools. Now this has got two more versions. These are idle hands are the devil's workshop and idle minds are the devil's workshop. Now, all these mean that if you have nothing to do, you are likely to do some mischief. For an ideal, idle person is likely to do something bad or evil. Let's move on to our example sentences. Why are you wasting your time doing nothing? Don't you know idle hands are the devil's tools? Or we have parents need to figure out something constructive for children to do in the afternoons after school. For an idle brain is the devil's workshop. Next, we come across the idiom to close your mind to. This means to be unwilling or unable to consider new ideas or proposals. Let's look at the example sentences. I have tried encouraging her, but it seems she's really closed her mind to the idea of marriage. 
she was accused of being close-minded and intolerant of other people's opinion. Our 28th idiom is a close shave. No, this is not what you do every morning or about your looks. This refers to a situation where a disaster or accident almost happens or is narrowly avoided. For example, we didn't hit the car on the highway, but it was a close shave. Or I had a close shave this morning when a tra tractor trailer unexpectedly swerved into my lane. Then we come to the idiom, too close for comfort. This means so near that you become afraid or anxious. To cause worry because of being dangerous or unwelcome in some way. As for sentences, we have the exams are getting a bit too close for comfort. And that car nearly hit me. That was too close for comfort. Our 30th idiom is behind closed doors. This means in private, in secret, without the public being allowed to attend. For example, they certainly seem happy together. But who knows what happens behind closed doors? Or every important issue is discussed by the cabinet and decided behind closed doors. Now similar to this is the idiom, a closed book. This refers to a person or a subject that you know nothing about. For example, art is a closed book to me, meaning I know and understand nothing about art. Again, there is no use arguing with Alok. His mind is a closed book on the subject. Meaning, Alok is quite stubborn and unwilling to understand others' point of view. Let's now have a look at the idiom to come out of the closet. This means to admit something openly that you kept secret before due to shame or embarrassment. Coming out involves a change in self-image for the individual which arises from an affirmation of his or her homosexuality. Let's look at the sentences. Homosexuals in public life are now coming out of the closet. Another one. She came out of the closet quite late herself, but now speaks about how others should make the move much sooner in their lives. For our 33rd idiom, we have every cloud has a silver lining. This means that there is always something hopeful about even the most difficult or unhappy situation. Now let's see what our example sentences say. When I'm going through a hard time, I try to remind myself that every cloud has a silver lining. It can also be used as the rally had a disappointing turnout, but the silver lining was that those who came pledged a great deal of money. Then we have on cloud nine. This means to be extremely happy. If you are on cloud nine, you are extremely happy because something very good has happened to you. For example, ever since Janet got her promotion at work, she has been on cloud nine. When my twins were born, I was on cloud nine. I couldn't believe these beautiful children were ours. 
Our next idiom too is cloud related. Under a cloud. This means in disgrace, suspected of having done something wrong. As usual, a look at our example sentences. Someone stole money at work and now everyone is under a cloud of suspicion. And he was asked to resign after the allegations of sexual harassment and left the company under a cloud. Let's now look have a, at an informal idiom. I refer to a cock and bull story. This refers to a story, excuse or explanation that is so unlikely that no one believes it. For example, I asked him about his job and he gave me a cock and bull story about being so rich that he did not have to work. And she tried to feed me some cock and bull story about being late as a train went on the wrong track. Our next idiom is to coin a phrase. Now this is used for introducing an expression that you have invented or to apologize for using a well-known idiom or phrase instead of an original one. Now let's look at the example sentences. Oh well, to coin a phrase, no news is good news. Or when Julia broke off the engagement, Raj was, to coin a phrase, sick as a parrot. Or maybe, well, we can't do anything about it now, so que sera sera, whatever will be, will be, to coin a phrase. A next idiom is cold comfort. This refers to a thing that is intended to make you feel better, but which does not. Something that is failed as an intended source of solace. Let's see what our example sentences say. When you have just had your car stolen, it's cold comfort to be told that it happens to somebody every day. Or let's have a look at this sentence. The news that I got a raise at work is close cold comfort after not getting that big promotion. Let's have a look at a disapproving idiom, a cold fish. This refers to a person who shows little or no emotion or is unfriendly or reserved. Now, example sentences for you. When I first met Ashok, he seemed rather a cold fish, but actually he is quite passionate about the job. Another one, the manager decided not to hire Billu as the receptionist because he came across like a cold fish during the interview. Our next idiom is to come in from the cold. This means to be included in a group or activity that you have had no part of before. Let's look at these sentences. Finland finally came in from the cold and became a member of the European Union. Another one, after excluding me from their meeting for months, the rest of the executive team has finally let me come in from the cold. That means I have finally been accepted into the group. Then we have the idiom to give the cold shoulder. This is also used as to get the cold shoulder. This simply means to be treated in a deliberately unfriendly way. The origin of this expression refers to 
meat. Meat cut from the shoulder of an adult sheep was very cheap. So giving visitors this meat served cold was a sign that they were not welcome. As for our example sentences, we have, I try to chat with my colleagues at work, but for some reason they have been giving me the cold shoulder. She thinks you started that humor about her and that's why she's been giving you the cold shoulder all day. Next, we have to get cold feet. This means that you no longer want to continue what you intended or started to do because you are nervous or afraid. For example, my zip line team was reduced to just two as the others got cold feet at the last minute. Everything was fine until it was time for the wedding rituals when she suddenly got cold feet. That means she decided not to get married anymore. Continuing our cold series, we now have in cold blood. This means deliberately and calmly without showing any pity. Let's see the sentences. The innocent victims were shot in cold blood. Or this was no crime of passion. He killed them in cold blood as they slept. Our next cold idiom is in the cold light of day. Now this refers to a situation when you have had the time to think calmly about something. For example, the plans made in the heat of the moment did not seem such a good idea in the cold light of day. Now, if you're feeling cold towards all these cold related items, do bear with me for just one more and that is to pour cold water on something or to throw cold water on something. This means to discourage or try to prevent a plan from being carried out, to be unenthusiastic about something. As usual, our example sentences. I have so many ideas to improve sales, but my manager pours cold water on all my suggestions. Do listen to my views before you decide to throw cold water on them. Our 46th idiom is to pour oil on troubled waters. This means to try and settle a disagreement or dispute or to take action to calm a tense or dangerous situation. For example, he is an experienced politician who may be able to pour oil on troubled waters and settle the dispute. The children are fighting again. Let me go and pour oil on troubled waters and get them to be friends again. Next, we move on to keep your powder dry. This means to remain ready for a possible emergency, to be prepared to act with little advance notice. For example, I know this job opportunity didn't work out but keep your powder dry for the next one that comes along. He must keep his powder dry for the really important issues. That means he must be ready for an important issue which may come along to be dealt with. Then we have to rant and rave. This means to show how angry you are by shouting or complaining loudly for a long time. 
For example, he was quite upset when he came home. So I let him rant and rave for a little while until he calmed down. Now there is no use if you rant and rave over past mistakes. Next, we come to read between the lines. This means to find or look for a hidden or extra meaning in something a person says or writes. Usually their real feelings about something. For example, reading between the lines, it was obvious he was feeling lonely in the party. Or reading between the lines, it looks like the company is bracing for a hostile takeover. Our fiftieth and final idiom in this video is one that is usually disapproving and that is rest on your laurels. Now this means to be satisfied with what you have achieved and you are no longer trying to improve. And a final set of example sentences for you. I know that my videos are popular, but I'm going to research new material and not rest on my laurels. Or even though your first book was a success, do start on the next one instead of resting on your laurels. Well, that's all from me in this video. All in all, learning a new language can be challenging. It's definitely not a piece of cake, especially when there are so many confusing idioms. However, with enough hard work and interest, you will succeed in no time. And hopefully, idioms will be crystal clear to you and not clear as mud. Do look out for my earlier two videos on idioms and the next video on idioms. Together, these four videos will help you master 200 idioms in an easy to understand language. This video is based on the information freely available on the internet. No originality is claimed for the same. The intention of this video is only to prepare candidates for answering examination questions on the subject and not for any financial gains. Do like and share this video and do subscribe to my channel now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And if you wish to drop in a line, I shall always be available at sumitacademy20 at gmail.com. Till later then, cheerio.